So um, in the second part of our um, first half of the podcast, I want to talk about the science potosphere. So now we are getting a bit more into the formats and also the audience of podcasts. Um, and uh, maybe to start first, what do we have in the so-called science potosphere? Um, for me, it's somewhere, yeah, it's a way to describe everything that's going on um, on the internet when it comes to auditory knowledge transfer, and which is somewhere in between mainstream and niche. And I always like to take a look at the current um, current uh, podcast charts, um, namely for Apple Podcasts and Spotify charts. And that's what I did for today. Um, and if we look at the categories of science and education or, or knowledge related formats, um, and I'm talking about um, more the German, the German formats here, um, then what you often see is uh, the prominence of public service uh, formats, uh, for example, SWR Wissen or Quarks Hintergrund or Hörsaal, which is interesting because it features uh, recordings of presentations at universities. So this is, these are quite popular actually formats and uh, a bit more newer are daily formats who are rather short, like 10 minutes or five minutes, um, which became quite popular are in the last years, but you also have more and more uh, like uh, private publishers like Zeit, for example, which is a big uh, newspaper in Germany, or The Guardian, who also publish podcasts now, and then some classics like Invisibilia by NPR or the BBC with the Infinite Monkey Cage. Um, so renowned publishers uh, who also try different approaches when it comes to um, knowledge transfer. But we also have a, some independent and private producers like for instance, Geschichte aus der Geschichte, these are two historians, or Methodisch Ingrek, which is really popular, or the podcast Sternengeschichten, which is done by one person, which is rather unusual, I think. And of course, <laughs> we have uh, the yeah the dominant <laughs> science format for a year now, which is uh, the coronavirus update, um, which dominates every chart, I think, uh, at the moment. So um, we can separate uh, the podcast, science podcasting fear into two, maybe, or even more sectors. And one sector is rather typical or classical science journalism. Like I mentioned, public service providers or newspapers, magazines, science magazines like uh, Spektrum der Wissenschaft or uh, the PM podcast. Um, and these are... Um, quite popular as well, but as you can see already here, um, the Sag mal du als Physiker podcast by the PM is an audible original, which means it's not available via RSS everywhere on the web, but only in the audible app. And we can discuss if that's uh, a podcast. I'd say no, <laughs> but they call it a podcast. But these, um, yeah, these uh, formats and providers are getting more and more popular now. Um, but there are also other ones, like for uh, instance, Scientists for Future, uh, they have a podcast. So they use podcasts as a way to reach out to people uh, who are already interested in their work or maybe find a new audience. Forschergeist by the Stifterverband is more like an interview format. And um, we also have other actors like probably science, those are comedians <laughs> I, uh, I've heard who are also have, who also have a background in in science and they are it's more for entertainment purposes I'd say um, and also science versus is also a bit more fresh and uh, entertaining format um, which is published by Gimlet um, it's an audio production uh, company uh, which had have now they are, I think, with Spotify. So uh, it's now uh, an official Spotify original, but you, th I think you can, all you can also listen to it on, on podcatchers as well. Um, I think uh, if we look more on um, the formats who are published by traditional institutions of science, for example, higher education institute, uh, institutions, you have, uh, for one podcast to show some facets of science, what science means, uh, particularly teaching and research, for example, you can have uh, 
uh, recordings from 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 lecture series and stuff like that. So this is one way to look at uh, the science potosphere. But also there are podcasts who have science and focus. So they uh, have uh, they are related to certain research projects, for example, or graduate schools, or they have some specific topic um, which uh, they are talking about. So this is uh, also quite um, quite popular as a as a way to to conceptualize a podcast. And uh, Mackenzie did a survey on that. I will talk about that in a second. And he basically said there is a science podcast for everyone. So there is a really broad spectrum. And I think uh, science and uh, knowledge and education are one of the most popular topics. And you can see here a screenshot from feed.de, which is this podcast search engine, the German one. And you can find so many different formats uh, if you look up for the science and health or medicine category so this is just to give you an impression how much is out there already these formats i think they differ um, depending on who is providing them so if it's uh, done by an institution it might be more like science communication or more like pr for for this institution or if it's done privately then it's more like a an amateur project to reach out to the to lay audiences uh, they are also different in how much effort you have to put into them storytelling is for instance uh, much more complicated with all the cutting and and script the scripts have to uh, write and stuff like that and also how how these podcasts are structured so uh, for one you have solo casts done by one person very popular are interviews with one-on-one -on -one or you have hosts with guests then we have discussion formats can be a moderated panel or the lava podcast which can be maybe translated with chumcast or gabfest uh, style of podcasting and as i already mentioned there's some kind of serialized storytelling which can be fictional um, which is not often the case with science related uh, content but it uh, this is done more non-fiction and i, I mean, already mentioned it um, interviews and discussion podcasts are um the most popular i think because uh, the, the balance between effort and um continuation for example is uh, is really good um i already mentioned a study by mckenzie he took a look at uh, english science podcasts um, produced between 2004 and 2018 and i have to warn you uh, his science <laughs> uh, definition is really focused on science so he left out all the arts and humanities podcasts and as you can see here the distribution between various disciplines if you want to you can um, put your own home discipline um, into the chat it would be nice to see but you can see most of the podcasts focus on general science um, after that comes physics and astronomy but some disciplines are rather under represented like data science for example but also chemistry is rather low i believe compared to how many people study that and he also took a look at the target audiences of these podcasts and as you uh, can see here on the right side it's more focused on the general public the most of them and not so much on scientists or uh, students for example as academic lecturers and children are uh, rather un underserved uh, uh, target audience of uh, science podcasts so <clears throat> i wanted to give you some some examples for for different formats we can find out there um i already mentioned the forscher geist which is produced by the by tim pritlove for the stifterverband so these are examples for institutional science communication um the tu chemnitz uh, uh, works together with detector fm to produce the tag sidecast weird name but it seems to be popular actually and cambridge university has a very long running uh, show which is called the naked scientists um runs since october 2005 or actually and they have a lot of 
um, fans uh, and various uh, shows uh, at the moment. So this uh, has been developed from a maybe more um, um, closed format to, to a series of sh different shows and uh, different hosts uh, who are um, put on the line there. So this is kind of the institutional science communication, which you can find really more often at the moment. Um, then some examples for these gap fest or LABA podcast <laughs> formats. And often what you find is that they are produced independently or privately, not by an institution, which makes, I think, the charm and also the humor in it. And often produced by younger researchers or scientists, experts, uh, so to speak, um, who are not maybe professors. Uh, this is uh, a bit more rare, I'd say. And I think in Germany, one of the most successful science podcasts is Methodisch Incorrect, which you can see here on the left side. They have a massive audience. Um, they do tours with live shows. <laughs> they have a large following, merch and stuff like that. So they are calling themselves, I think, uh, rock stars of science. So if you're into that, um, these are um, guys like that. Uh, also very popular, Sociopod, which is about education, pedagogy, or um, educational science and research, and also philosophy, which is rather unusual because um, as uh, Mackenzie found out <laughs> or showed that many science podcasts really focus on uh, science and not so much on humanities issues. And lastly, one of the uh, some examples for storytelling uh, formats in science journalism. As I already said, storytelling takes a lot of effort and it's uh, often cost and time intensive and often a lot of people work on that. This is why we find storytelling mostly in science uh, journalism. And one example in Germany is Story Quarks by the VDR, um, WDR, sorry, um, which runs um, kind of monthly, um, focuses on one story related to scientific uh, uh, research. Um, one of the classics, if you are into science uh, in in podcasting, is Radiolab, which is hugely popular. I mean, they have uh, on Castbox alone, they have eight million plays, which is ridiculously uh, ridiculous. Um, but they change a bit more from from science to more broad topics. Uh, that's what I at least what I read. And one interesting example is Plastisphere, which is focused on. Um, plastic pollution in the world, which is done by one person, by Anja Krieger. She's a Berlin, uh, Berlin-based uh, science journalist and also radio reporter. And she works together, or she's part of the Riff Reporter Collective. And uh, she does that not very often. Um, she puts out episodes, but they, these are very well researched, I think, and more like features, for example, um, which is pretty cool, I think. 